Go for it. Friggin' what up, dude? Um, I'm Strider Wilson, and I'm the host of this podcast that's mine. It's gonna be called History is Nice. History is Dang. Friggin' what up, dude? Welcome back to another ep of History is Dank, dude. I'm your host, Strider Wilson, dude. We got Aaron going beast mode on the sticks, dude. What's going down, Aaron, dude? What up? Dude, I'm freaking just posted up over here, dude. We're recording on a Wednesday, Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Uh, that's, you know, in, in the United States for those listening across the pond or wherever you may be listening from. Because I know that this podcast extends to the far reaches of the globe, which is also something that we're going to be talking about on today's episode, getting to perhaps one of the most difficult regions of the globe to get to. But special shout out to um, the day we're recording. Of course, this is going to be released later. Um, Juneteenth, the freedom of the uh, American slaves. And uh, Aaron, you were saying that was when the news actually reached Texas because, you know, back then, 1800s, that uh, took time for uh, things to travel a little bit. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see, the end of slavery in the United States. Um, it actually, I think it's, the yeah, ordered the final enforcement of an Emancipation Proclamation in Texas at the end of the American Civil War. So it's after, we've had the Emancipation Proclamation, but we still had, um, uh, uh, we still had slavery technically until the 13th Amendment in 1865. And then uh, in June of 1866, the news reached Texas, the final slave state. Fucking Texas. It's just because news took forever to get there. I mean, it, I would hope it would have ended sooner, but who yep. knows? Um, well, that's good. That is a good thing to be celebrating um, today. And today we're going to be covering... A dank ass. Look, everyone knows I love heist crews. We just, our last episode was on heists. If I was going to be part of any crew, dude, pit crew's pretty sick, you know, but I don't know if I have the strength. You know, pit crew's just like D2 offensive linemen, jack dudes just throwing tires around, and, you know, quick dudes that, you know, can scurry and get down and bing, 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 do a little freaking drills and stuff, get those old oh, lug nuts or whatever they are, dude, and then, the, then a jack dude. That looks like, you know, he's into BDM and, um, you know, looks like he looks like the gimp from frickin' uh, Pulp Fiction just holding the gas and fueling up the car like that. And then they let him go. I imagine he sleeps in that gear and he just sleeps standing upright and they bring him out just to fuel up the car and the pit crew. That'd be pretty sick. But other than that, I love a heist crew. I'd like to heist art. Everyone knows this. And if I wasn't going to do that, and in fact... If I wasn't living out my life dream and my profession as being a valet, what up? Um, I think I'd want to be an explorer, like an archaeologist, Indiana Jones style. Being able to carry a revolver on my hip would be sick. Um, being like, look, I don't, you just don't know if I'm going to run into anything crazy. You know, anyone's going to try to heist whatever article of history that I'm looking for, or origin of history that I'm trying to, or point of origin I'm trying to get to and make history. And I love the era of explanation. You have these great big personalities. Um, you know, Admiral Perry, you've probably heard of him, or Commander Perry. Two different guys, P-E-R-R-Y. That's the guy that, like, went to Japan and, and opened up, you know, trade with the East for America. And then there's um, P-E-A-R-Y. And that guy, he's famous for one of his crowning achievements was he's the first guy ever to reach the North Pole, but today we're saying the actual first guy was his partner, Matthew Henson, okay, known as the kind one, which we'll get into, which is sick, this guy had good vibes, dude, okay, um, and we're going to talk about he was the actual first one to get to the North Pole, um, a lot of this is still sort of clouded because this was in, you know, the turn of the century, early 1900s. And, uh, you know, they took photos, but it's not like you could whip out your iPhone and be like, look, here it is. And then these guys were using like stars to map shit and find the coordinates. 
you know, they do say there are experts that look today and they, they've corroborated and go, no, no, they, they were, that's legit. But then there's other people who go, no, 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 other explorers reached it first or. So it's um, a little bit shrouded in, in mystery. And, and Matthew Henson, um, he didn't get credit and wasn't, you know, didn't receive. Now he has posthumously received um, honorary titles and all these things. He's, he's a member of societies. These historical societies, these guys, these gentlemen, dude. You've seen those the movie that Lost City of Zed. That's the British Z is Zed, and uh, it's all a bunch of dudes with mustaches being like, <laughs> laughing like, oh, now you will never believe. <laughs> dudes who talk like that. Um, these societies, this historic geographical society, his, uh, explore society, historian society. You know, dudes who wear khaki drink sip on scotch and go <laughs> and ignore their wives if there's one commonality in explorers all i know about explorers dude pretty much this is you're gonna ignore your wife and at some point you're gonna eat frozen dog or seal it's all i know at some point in your career you're eating frozen dog or seal and you're gonna ignore your wife that's all i know about explorers it's not why I want to get into it. I love puppies, and I, I would be down to crush some frozen seal and technically sushi, I guess. Um, even though it's a mammal, but I love talking and hanging with my wife, dude. Aaron, if you were going to do any profession besides being a, f a beast on the fucking sticks, what um, would you do? Um, well, I would have loved to have been a professional baseball player. Yeah. Classic. Uh, or a musician. What instrument? Uh, guitar. Sick. Sure. Just ripping tasty licks. Yeah. So sick. So sick. <laughs> but like, there's no like real job. I'm like, <laughs> no, hell no. Be, I'd be very special to be like clerk. <laughs> I would like to be a legal clerk. I'd like to be a. What's Aaron Brockovich's I mean, job? Vi video store clerk would still be a fun job. <laughs> video store clerk would be tight. Condescend to people, tell them like, yeah. you, what are you talking? You actually, if you want to see that, that actually movie kind of sucks, and it's actually derivative of this movie that you should be watching. Technically, it's in Sweden, but do you mind reading subtitles? Okay, you don't want to read subtitles. All right, fine. You can rent this, but I'm gonna charge you twice for being wrong for having bad taste. <laughs> be a classic. That's exactly how it'd be if I was a video store clerk. Um, also, you can rock a six stash. Dude, yeah. what about male porno star, dude? <laughs> That'd be a sick ass job, dude. I don't know. Oh, dude. I don't think they get paid as as well as you might think. Dude, what about male masseuse? Chicks only. <laughs> Chicks only, dude. Dude, because dude, here's the thing, dude. I can't be a male masseuse. And what if I start massaging a dude and he pops a woody, dude? Dude, what if he gets a woody? What am I gonna do, dude? I'd be more worried about what you're going to do if you do. Dude, you what if we both have woodies, dude? <laughs> <laughs> dude, we have to touch tips, dude. You got to see it through. It's fine. It's professional. <laughs> want customer satisfaction, dude. That's Convertible Craig's job. People don't know that. Convertible Craig's job is actually massage therapist chicks only. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're talking matthew henson okay this guy was a beast okay early life um his parents died when he was young kind of had to find his own way um born in maryland you know worked in dc and then spent a lot of time um working out on a vessel a vessel called the katie hines um and he was taken under the uh wing of a captain childs and um he learned a ton of um seafaring skills navigational skills captaining skills everything on a boat this guy could do it from swabbing the fucking decks to you know docking dude which always seemed hard to me docking you know, you're going to rub up against a boat the wrong way. Someone's going to get mad. This dude could dock, dude. But he could also, you know, find the headwinds, you know, do the sails and you know, get you where you need to be. Dude, navigate, bro. So sick, dude. Navigation. These guys are all expert navigators, dude. 
I think the way that explorers navigate, they go, here's my wife, and here's the farthest point from her, dude. That's what these guys like to do, dude. Common yeah, thing, or, dude. Yeah, or children. Yeah. Or yeah, children, dude. Responsibilities here, dude. Let me go find yeah. glory over here. Or uh, my debts are here. <laughs> yeah, debts, exactly. Or I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be in prison right now. <laughs> dude, well, a lot of these guys, well, they would find articles, and the geographical societies would fund it. This, tr this trip to the North Pole... Bro, Teddy Roosevelt threw a little funding on there. He's like, I like these guys. Let's uh -huh. fucking get them out there. Because, you know, it's glo It's kind of like what we were doing the space race. Like, Kennedy, everyone thinks this idea. We need to get to the moon. We need to be the Russians to the moon. We're going to go there. We're going to do it. And, yes, it did advance technology. But that, that's what happened in this age of exploration around the turn of the century. We were going up against other nations, Britain, whatever, whoever it was. You know, we want it. We want it glory. It's all, it's all tied into nationalism and shit. Um, but it's pretty sick, dude. You know, you get to go on a sick boys trip, technically, which is freaking tight. Um, Next thing you know, there's going to be a conspiracy. Like, they faked the they faked going to the North Pole. Dude, I know, Stanley bro. Kubrick shot it. There is no North Pole, dude. <laughs> Doesn't exist. There's no North oh, Star. Oh, that is that is a thing. For really? Sure that exists, yeah. Hilarious. Um, so in 1884, Captain Childs dies. Henson makes his way back to D.C., you know, out from sea. Uh, sick rhyme right there by me. <laughs> and it was there that in 1887, he meets Robert Edwin Perry. This is the Admiral, Rear Admiral Perry that I was telling you about. He's an explorer and officer in the U.S. Navy and Corps of, Eng of Civil Engineers. And he's impressed by, um, he, he's working in like a hat shop. And dude, they go in and they bond. He's like, he's basically working in lids, dude. Matthew Henson's <laughs> working in lids of that era. He's like, dude, you want a sick freaking dude? Here's the thing, dude. I got your, we're in D.C. I got your Washington Nationals hat that doesn't even exist right now, but it's in a sick colors. It's in a grayscale. It's actually got camo, dude. It's a camo with a sick logo right there. You could wear it backwards. You could wear it sideways if you're a madman. So he's he's. But just the, imagine everybody who works in the lids now uh, with mercury poisoning. Very true. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> they would use mercury to shine it. Yeah. So you got get the sickest mercury for you, dude. It won't even make you that nuts. It'll make you more, dude, you'll get fucking tilted, dude. You're going to want to wear it. That's why dudes actually started wearing their hat sideways to begin with. It was mercury made them think it looked good. <laughs> and meth. Uh, if you wear your hat sideways, you've done meth. Let's just be honest. Um, anyway, dude. To be clear to listeners, uh, mad as a hatter, the phrase comes from. Yeah. Uh, they used to use uh, mercury to treat the felt on hats. Mm-hmm. Your Mad Hatter character from, um, what's that movie Alice that I hate? Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. I hate that movie so much. I hate that whole vibe. Um, that's that's what that is, exactly. Your Mad Hatters. And uh, so Edwin Perry and Matthew Henson become boys. Perry's an explorer at this point. Matthew Henson's been out at sea. He obviously goes, dude, look, bro, I spent time on boats. You like boats. You like hats. This is sick. And guess what? Perry hires him on the spot. To be his what, Aaron? Valet. Oh. How sick is that? Now, this is like old school valet style, like assistant. You do it all. Um, but he's like, you're my valet. I got an expedition coming up. We're going to Nicaragua, dude, which I've been there. The Continental Divide. Let's cruise. These guys cruise out to Nicaragua. They hit the rainforests of Central America. They're doing some Lost City of Zed shit, dude. They're meeting tribes, dude. They're documenting. They're, they're, they're cartographers. Dude, they're finding shit. They're tasting coffee, dude. They're being boys, dude. They take a sick-ass boys trip. Find stuff out, dude. Discover information and explore, dude, and report back, dude. Okay? They cruise back. April 1891, Henson marries Ava Flint. Okay? Um, but shortly thereafter, Henson, like a true explorer, he's like, look, I got to bounce. Um, <clears throat> and he goes on an expedition to Greenland. Um, they're supposed to be um surveying the land you know that's mapping you know drawing do they have expert they have sick ass drawings dude of the land there um henson is embraced by local eskimo culture there he learns the language he had a way with language he was smart he just he just some people just do he had that gift um he learns arctic survival skills over that year which is going to come in handy um then they go they so then they come back he meets his wife they post up dude hook up um, they go, their next trip to Greenland comes in 1893, this time with the goal of charting the entire ice cap, okay? Um, so their two-year journey almost ends in tragedy 
The Perry's team is on the brink of starvation. Members of the team manage to survive by eating all but one of their sled dogs. They bring like 50 sled dogs. Dogs, rest in peace, dude. I, I hate that, but, you know, it's survival. Um, so they, despite this trip, they go back in 1896 and in 1897, um, mapping, charting. Um, they want to collect the meteorites landed there. They want to explore these meteorites. Um, then they sell these meteorites to the American Museum of Natural History, and they use those funds to fund their future expedition, um, and which is their iconic expedition um, of 1902. No, sorry. That's later. They go back. This one ends tragically. Six Eskimo team members die. There's tons of, there's a lack of food supplies, um, but they made more progress. Okay. They still, despite all these setbacks, they're making more and more progress. Henson's um, marriage is on the rocks at this point. He's always gone. You know, you can just see that it's got to be stressful. Um, President Roosevelt likes these guys, though. He goes, dude, these guys, they keep going back. They're making progress, dude. It's good for America. They're beasts. I'm a beast, dude. All these dudes are coming together. Perry's a beast. Henson's a beast. Roosevelt's a beast. He's like, you guys got to go back, okay? Um, he sets them with a state-of-the-art ice-crushing vessel, bro. That's like this has this, the hard steel front the, that has the narrow thing in the, the that just takes all the pressure of the and the weight of the vessel and just cracks through that ice so they can get farther up farther farther up the ice but you get trapped in the ice sometimes if it seals behind you but and it melts it's 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 melting ice and and, and it's blocking the sea path thwarting the mission's completion forcing them to turn back around okay at this point henson's father he, he's fathered a son okay he's met and guess what you're thinking oh with his wife back home no he's taken an Inuit wife I shouldn't maybe taken to he, the people are the kind when they love him. He's fallen in love with an Inuit wife. Um, Anuk, I'm going to pronounce her name wrong. Anuakwa. Um, Perry also took um, a um, Inuit wife. And back home in 1906, in 1906 by the way, um, he did marry a new wife, Lucy Ross. He's got two wives. <laughs> so this dude slays. Good okay. Call. This is what I'm talking about. This guy, he's a beast. Okay comes back and in 1908 he's like look dude i gotta go explore but also i got my wife out there i gotta go see my other wife this is sick perry's down okay they want to go they want to chase glory okay um and henson he's an absolute beast perry has a quote saying with the years of experience equal to that of perry himself he was indispensable that's this guy um one of the expedition members actually says this guy, Donald McMillan. He says that. Um, basically, like, Perry's the leader. Also, this is a, in the turn of the century. Like, they're not going to let Matthew Henson, a black dude, be the leader, even though he could. And that's kind of what McMillan is saying here. Perry, the white dude with the mustache, classic. Even though he's not British, he definitely laughs like... <laughs> he laughs like one of those proper dudes, you know, for sure. Sipping on scotch. Well, you'll never believe <laughs> what my Inuit wife said. <laughs> you know. You have one wife, try having two. I should not think Perry had two. I think he just had the one. Um, in any case, the expedition continues the following year. Dude, I'm just imagining, like, it takes months for them to travel back and forth. It's insane, the logistics that's going on here, okay? And let's get in now to this iconic mission, Perry and Henson and the Explorers, and actually reaching the, the North Pole for the first time. Somewhat disputed, though. We're going to get into that. But first, you better crank that AC because things are heating up at DraftKings Casino. The excitement is endless. The vibes are right. And the cash prizes could be huge. Play hundreds of games all summer long. Dive into Casino Classic or blast off with DraftKings exclusive Rocket. New players start by playing, excuse me, new players start by playing just five bucks to get 50 bucks in casino credits in your pocket instantly all you got to do is download the DraftKings casino app and sign up with co with code dank you'll be soaking up the fun in no time the crown is yours gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or what in west virginia 
Visit www.1800gambler.com. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. One per opt-in in new customer. $5 in wagers required. Max $50 in non-withdrawable casino credits that ex- uh, expire in 168 hours. See casino.draftkings.com slash get 50 for eligibility terms and respons- responsible gaming resources. All right. We're back, baby. We're back, baby. Their final attempt to reach the North Pole begins in 1908. Henson, we mentioned, invaluable team member. Dude's an absolute beast. Dude also has a sick mustache. I have to tell you that. I think, you know, it keeps you warm. Also, you're not shaving out there in the cold. You're freezing. You can't be shaving. Oh, let me shave. I want to look good for this pitcher. It actually looks more legit for the pitcher if you have a sick-ass mustache and beard. Okay. They're cruising. 1908, they got their ice-breaking vessel. Okay. This is their eighth attempt to reach the North Pole. If anything from this story is a story of perseverance and determination, these guys aren't giving up. Okay. They're cruising out. On August 18th, 1908, Perry and Henson left Greenland by ship to begin their effort to reach the Pole. They're accompanied by, (coughs) excuse me, 22 Inuit men, 17 Inuit women, 10 children, pretty gnarly, 246 dogs, and 70 tons of whale meat. These guys are posting up eating whale. Good blubber, dude. 70 tons of whale meat? That's insane. It's a lot. Yeah. 140,000 pounds. That's insane probably only like three whales though true that is true perry and henson leave their ship at ellesmere island in what is now called nunavut in the nunavut territory canada with a smaller party of four inuit men they lay a trail of supplies to the pole who laid a trail of the supplies to the pole so this is what always surprises me this is what i have to mention here everyone's wondering okay who reached it first perry or Henson, or someone else in a different group the year before. It's always a guide. Everyone that climbs Everest, they're like, dude, it's the Sherpas that are always getting there first. Then, like, it's another dude being like, oh, I did it. Yes, good. Like, it's always the locals, bro. Yeah. They probably walked there a thousand years ago and didn't even know it. I mean, I think they'd know Everest. Everest, they'd know. That's true. <laughs> it's like five miles in the air. Everest, they'd be like, whoa, so, hold on, dude. How did I get all the way up here? Sorry, I had to take a, had to take a deuce. <laughs> well, this is yeah. one hell of a sleep Yeah, I was, just, I was trying to rub one out uh, without getting the other one finding out. Um, yeah, but the North Pole, also probably, I don't know if it's at quite at elevation, but um, it's difficult to reach, and it's an arduous journey, obviously. Um, but in any case, I just wanted to bring that up because they're, like, going ahead and leaving supplies And it's like, well, there's no supplies for these guys. But that just might be how they do it. You go up, they leave supplies, they come back, they rest. These guys get that next leg. Maybe they go up and and trade. That might be how they journey forth forth with and onward. Um, Perry becomes ill. Okay? When they're close, they're ill. He sends Henson ahead as a scout. So they do trade stuff off. He proceeded to a place, to the American flag, at what he thought was the North Pole. So Perry's got beef now. He's like, dude, I just sent you ahead. I didn't tell you. What you I, he's like, I wanted to place the flag. He's like, well, dude, I fucking got there. I mean, that's what we came to do, right? Then like, aren't we boys? We've been through this all together. Like, aren't we like equal dudes? Like, I'm here. You're sick. Your immune system's being a bitch right now. Now your attitude is, let's figure it out. So history, of course, initially gives Perry credit for being the first to person to reach the Earth's most, the Earth's northernmost point at the North Pole where Santa lives of course Santa's been there but Perry's party long overlooked in the record books okay um, he plants it there and and Henson says he's quoted he goes look I was actually exhausted to realize at the moment that my life's purpose had been achieved he goes I was just so tired um I kind of didn't even notice at first that like we were there. He's like, he looks at the compass. It's going wild. Like, 
you know, like haunted style of ghosts are around or some shit. And he's looking at the compass, he's like, we're here. And he checks his mappings and his, his, you know, coordinates and shit. And he's like, oh, dude. And he, he goes, the, f the results of the first observation showed that we had figured out the distance very accurately. For when the flag was hosted over the geographical center of Earth, it was located just behind our igloos, Henson wrote. So he's like, boom, we made the igloos there. Like, I, it was actually like, like, you know, they f he like walked a few feet forward, make, like maybe there was some elevation. He's like, it must be here. But then it's like, oh, it's actually just kind of right over there. And then boom, right at the exact spot. Um, Perry arrives 45 minutes later. Um, he was going to wait for Don to check the exact locations the next morning. The positions are verified. And he says, Matt, we've reached the North Pole at last. So they're having a sentimental moment. They reach it. They come back. And then now beef with success ensues. So after their association with explorers for more than 20 years together, they become estranged. Though the duly acknowledged uh, contributions of each member of the team, including the Inuit hunters, Perry claimed the sole titles, the man who, quote, discovered the North Pole. He's like, look, dude, it's just, uh, look, dude, this is just how it has to be, you know? Like, it's just, if, we're gonna, if I'm going to sell this book, it's just kind of tough if we sell it together, you know, we got to split the profits, you know. He, decide, he denied Henson as full partner in the enterprise even though when he's up there in the pole he's like dude we're boys <clears throat> okay henson claims that from the time we knew we were at the pole commander perry perry sparsely or excuse me scarcely spoke to me henson recalls he says it nearly broke my heart that he would rise in the morning and slip away on the homeward trail without wrapping on the ice for me as as was the established custom i don't know exactly what wrapping on the ice maybe just talking Rapping, going back and forth is, I think, what he means. Um, you know, you're cruising, you've reached your goal. Like, don't you want to, like, reminisce and talk with your bro? You're going back. But it sounds like Perry would just kind of go up ahead and be like, oh, well, I just got to get up early and just keep going all awkward and stuff. You know, but as an explorer, this guy's great at ignoring loved ones. That's what explorers do. They eat seal and they avoid the responsibility within relationships. It's not a knock. You're achieving glory. There's a price to be paid. Okay. They had retrieved and transported the Cape York meteorite, the second largest of its kind from the, that's the one that they sold in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Um, they, they were, they've gone to the farthest point north by reaching Greenland, northernmost point, Cape Morris, Jessup. Okay. They trained other members of their team together. Henson was fluent in the Inuit language. Um, this is where he received his name. They loved him. Also, Perry, you know, kind of a disgruntled guy. Matthew Henson was the one who was talking a lot with the Inuits and 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 was really well liked and wanted to learn more about their culture. And he was known in the community as I'm going to butcher this name again, Mara Paluk, uh, and it meant Matthew the Kind One, Mara Paluk. So he was a good dude. Okay. Um, now there's all sorts of disputes, even Perry's claim is disputed today, but, um, um, and Perry himself said, Henson must go all the way. I can't make it there without him. He said this prior Then afterwards, you know, the song changes a little bit. Um, like I mentioned earlier though, um, even though there are those that do doubt, um, it's widely accepted that. Perry and Henson, Henson and Perry, actually, if you're going, you're kind of that 45 minute time frame, did get to the North Pole first, planted the flag, charted it, said, what up? Um, in the decades ensuing, <clears throat> Perry went to work as a clerk in New York at a federal customs house. But, um, you know, they say, oh, I see, he never forgot his life as an explorer. He wrote books. Um, at 70 years old, he finally received an acknowledge, the acknowledgement he deserved. The highly regarded Explorers Club in New York accepted him as an honorary member. Of course, he was barred due to his race. In 1944, he and other members of the expedition were awarded the Congressional um, Medal of Honor because they were all in, in, within the Navy and stuff, so they could receive the um, that Service Members Award. 
which what's the what's the highest civilian award you can achieve in the United States? Like the distinguished the Congressional Medal of Freedom, I think. Yeah, the Medal of Freedom, yeah. Or which is also very sick. The President's Medal of Freedom or something like that. Yeah. And the Congressional Medal of Honor for those that serve in yeah. acts of heroism. Um so yeah, dude, I mean Matthew Henson's an absolute beast explorer, dude. Got there, got it done. You know, you can read his books, his accounts, or some great quotes. That's basically the rough arc of it. Um, but it's very sick. I love the era of, of exploration. Very, you know, a fun time, turn of the century. The, and dude, the outfits these dudes wore, like you look at it, like it's like, you know, it's like seal tan, skin turned inside out. Like, um, you know, the, the stuff that you put on their lips to get not chapped like whale fat as like chapstick and just dude these guys just look like they're freezing their ass off like uh it just looks so uncomfortable you really gotta not want to hang out with your wife to do this uh but it's pretty incredible and the fact that they went back eight times i mean if you can take nothing and it's i love that these guys they were friends and with success breeds beef sometimes you'd like if um it didn't go that route. Um, I like to imagine they squashed that beef in the end. Um, but, uh, you know, it sounds like in, there's quotes and stuff out there that weren't retracted or anything like that. So it just kind of dudes ran with it. Perry ran with the narrative. And, and then Henson, of course, due to his race and everything, was not given proper coverage by the press. And, um, you know, finally things turned around and he did and he, and he was authored and released his own books um so pretty freaking badass to go out there and just beast it and you know and of course the journeys before nicaragua central america that's not easy you're getting bug bites dude risking malaria and then you're, go you're going to the you're going from harsh climate to harsh climate dude. the equator all the way up to the north pole and um yeah just insane dude so so these dudes trudged on so very sick very very sick dude so whatever you're doing in your life trudge on you're gonna have failure um keep going you know but maybe don't or ask your wife if it's cool if you take multiple wives i guess if it's cool it's cool you know maybe it's just customary dude so fired up on that slaying dude fired up on that so sick dude um also oh, i forgot to mention this is what i i matthew henson's son was with the inuit woman not with lucy ross back home so i wanted to mention i want to mention that it wasn't like so he did spend more time with his kid actually out there in, in um up in greenland and at the north pole so that's freaking legit dude teaching him ways dude this is sick this is where you document stuff here here's how you seal is best served this way you know stuff like that dude cruising dude absolutely cruising dude cruised gotta say that you can't you can't not say it retrieved meteorites mapped stuff out cartographing dude mapping surveying getting recon coming back dapping it up with freaking probably Teddy Roosevelt at some point avoided getting eaten by a polar bear yeah that's pretty yeah you know they probably saw some polar bears up there mm -hmm. you see look they say with bears if you're black you if it's black you can fight back if it's brown you know get out of town and if it's white good night because you're dead mm -hmm. so Fired up on that up, dude. Fired up on Matthew Henson, dude. Being an absolute beast explorer. Getting it done. Um, cruising out. And then a clerk, dude. That's what you never know, dude. He's just, you know, Indiana Jones style. He's a professor. Oh, cool, dude. I'm, I'll, I'll put this stuff. I'll put this document back where it needs to be. Or I'll register the serial number for you. But then I'll also go out there and get it done. Very sick, dude. I love that, dude. I love that duality, dude. So, fired up. Fired up. Um... The, oh, by the way, the National Geographic Society and the Naval Affairs Subcommittee of the U.S. House of Representatives acknowledged Perry primacy 
at the poll, a view supported by numerous modern analysts. So what that means, Perry and Henson, basically. So they do say that these were the first guys to reach the North Pole. Legit, fired up, stay stoked, keep being beasts, bro. Um, absolute legends. Questions, comments, suggestions, send them in. Stay freaking stoked, and we'll catch you on the next app, dude. Let's.